Hi, this is uh, Bill Whitley. I'm a sports pilot CFI. Uh, we're here uh, in front of the plane talking about flying uh, in general and talking about flying the Challenger 2 behind me uh, in specific. It is not intended to be a, a lesson to teach you how to fly or a substitute for you if you're interested in flying uh, to getting direct instruction from a qualified instructor or CFI. Okay, we're here now on the first item on our uh, pre-flight checklist is the cockpit. And so we're going to look inside the airplane, we're going to look for any uh, things that are out of place, anything that's broken, uh, any of that kind of thing. We also want to check the controls. So this is the stick, and uh, pulling it back raises the elevator, and pushing it forward lowers the elevator. So we look back there and we see that by pulling the stick forward and back, we see all that our elevator is going up and down. Moving it from side to side changes the ailerons. The aileron should go up this way, and they should go up on the other side. So we're going to check. We're going to check the cables that are here, and just inspect them and look for any damage, anything that's bent or broken, and things like that. Uh, things that they shouldn't be. Okay. So we like uh, everything that's in the cockpit. Uh, all things systems seem to be right, and the controls are working for us. Okay. I wanted to talk for a few minutes about uh, two very critical uh, phases of flight. Every flight involves at least one takeoff and, and landing. The, the real critical thing about this is what we're doing is we're, we're changing in a takeoff from being a ground rolling vehicle to an airplane in flight. And of course when we land it's the reverse. You're an airplane in flight becoming a ground rolling vehicle where the weight of the plane is shifted from being on the wheels on takeoff to the wings lifting the plane and then when you're landing from the wings holding the plane up with lift to the landing gear and rolling on the ground. Sounds simple but these are the two very very critical times of a flight. Uh, if something's going to go wrong and you're going to have a problem it's going to be in all probability when a change occurs and the plane hits something or uh, lands hard or otherwise come in contact with the ground. So uh, I wanted to just talk about the basic idea of, of what we're going to do and what we're trying to accomplish with the takeoff and with the landing. Takeoffs, once we get them down, are pretty simple, but basically what you want to do is, of course, have the plane uh, lined up on the runway, straight down the runway, uh, being in full control. You want to make sure that you and your passenger are uh, have your seat belts on, if you're wearing eyeglasses or sunglasses, have those on. Uh, have your communications uh, equipment on, your headgear, however you're, you're doing it. And make sure everything is squared away and uh, the doors are latched and all those kinds of things. You should have a checklist to kind of check these things before you, go, you advance the throttle and do the takeoff. You want the plane safe and ready to go and you don't want to be fooling around trying to get the plane lined up or closing the door or something like that when you're doing the takeoff. You want to have your attention completely on controlling the plane and, and having it go straight down the runway and gaining airspeed to lift off. Alright, so we're there, we've done all those checks, we're good to go. We slowly and steadily advance that throttle to full throttle. Sometimes I've had students actually try to take off at half throttle or three-quarter throttle thinking that I don't know, somehow uh, doing it slowly is better. You don't want to do that. You want, you want the maximum thrust you can get. You want to have your full takeoff power. Yes, it's possible to take off maybe with three-quarter power, but you're just going to be rolling along the ground longer, not having the lift, and uh, why put yourself in a position where you don't have the lift and you don't have the control of the plane? You want to get that transition from being a ground rolling vehicle to an airplane flying where you're flying with the, with the wings and the control of the uh, control surfaces, the rudder, uh, the elevator, and the ailerons as quickly as possible. The most dangerous time is right there when you're close to the ground and you're sort of half flying and not flying. Uh, you don't really have control of the plane and that's where mishaps can occur. So in our takeoff, what we're going to do, again, is give it full throttle, plane going straight down the runway in control. We get the plane off the ground. Now in the Challenger 2, it's a pusher, high wing pusher. So it's actually pushing the nose down a little bit. We have the stick all the way back, which lifts our elevators, and, and the, the nose will come up, and when you reach airspeed in this plane here, about 40 miles an hour, 38, 40 miles per hour, uh, it'll come off the ground. Now, if you held the stick back and you continued to, to climb, 
uh, up out of there. You notice, you see how the wing is going to be going up uh, and more and more at a higher angle of attack? You can stall the plane. That is, it'll come up and kind of try to go up too steeply and it won't gain airspeed. We have to have airspeed to produce the lift at less than the critical angle of attack. So what we're going to do as soon as we come off the ground is we're going to let the stick come forward just a little bit and fly parallel to the ground, maybe three or five feet off the ground, and gain that airspeed. In the Challenger 2, we want to get up to about 55 miles an hour, and then when we have our 55, we can pull back on the stick and go ahead and climb out. So it's important to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it because if you're taking off on a short field and maybe there's some trees ahead, you might think, well, boy, I'll just pull back on the stick and, and, and climb over those trees. Actually, that's the wrong thing to do because you, what you'll do is kind of mush the plane and you won't climb that high and you may even stall it and you may hit those trees. So get off the ground, fly level, get that airspeed up. Once you have the airspeed increased to your, uh, your best rate of climb at 55 miles an hour, then you can pull back on the stick and climb out and you'll actually clear the trees or any obstacles much better. So that's just a little tip, uh, a little quick talk about the theory and the ideas of takeoffs. Uh, let's talk a little bit about landings and the critical uh, elements there. Okay, when we come in for landing, what well, first thing we want is a good stabilized approach. That is, if the runway is over here, we want to come in with that plane and, and, and have the, the plane lined up with the runway well in advance, at least a quarter of a mile or so, in advance of coming in to land on that runway. If we're over here and we're kind of flying back and forth and wiggling the plane around and trying to get stabilized and uh, trying to control that plane as we come into the landing, it's going to make the landing much more difficult. So the first step for a good landing is have a stabilized approach. So you're on the center line of that runway and coming in and, and, and coming down and approaching it at your, at your best speed in the, this Challenger. Uh, we want about 55 miles an hour and coming in with a stabilized approach. As we come down, and, and we want to come down at a pretty good angle uh, at 55 miles an hour, as we get about 50 feet or so from the ground, we're going to start a round out. That is, we're going to arrest this downward motion of the plane and start to round it out so that we're flying more parallel with the ground. And, uh, and, and as we do that round out, we'll come down fairly close to the, to the uh, runway, uh, you know, five or 10 feet. And then what we're going to do, we have the stick, we're controlling the, uh, we're controlling the, the yaw with our feet and we're keeping it straight down the center of the runway. If we, if we get off to the side just a little bit, if we had a crosswind or something, we can use the ailerons to pull us back whichever way we need to go. But we want to keep that nose straight down the runway. We don't want it to yaw off to the left or the right. As we get down close to the runway, uh, we're pulling back on the stick. We've, we've first pulled back very slowly in the round out and then you're, you're flying parallel to it, and as the, the airplane, you've pulled the power back, is settling to the runway, then we're gonna pull back a little bit faster, a little bit faster on the stick, and as, just as the plane main gear touches down, we should be back nearly all the way back with our stick, so our plane's just about stalling. That's gonna be the slowest point of flight, and we'll just touch down gently, and it'll roll out, keeping the stick back, and it will roll out and slow down. If, we need to, we can apply the brakes at that point and slow it down, down the plane further. And, and keep it down back on your two main gear. The nose wheel has not touched yet. And we're keeping the stick back, holding it back and letting it roll out. And uh, then it'll eventually, the nose will come down and, uh, and, and touch. And then you can, if you need to turn around or whatever you're going to do in your taxi. So that's the general theory and what we want to do with, uh, with, with landings. So let's wrap it up at that point and we'll talk about some more things a little bit later.